Hi, Robert Varden with the Trax Corporation. You know, be it our engineered underlayments, our tack strips, our seaming tapes, or our variety of other products, you know at Trax we really strive to develop solutions. Of course, solutions for those in the floor covering industry. One of those solutions is our Cool Glide seaming system. You know, many of you may just know the tool is a tool that sits on top of the carpet and doesn't go underneath the carpet like a conventional seaming iron. Also unique about the Cool Glide is the Cool Glide doesn't get hot like a conventional hot iron. So therefore there's no issue of burning yourself or your carpet with the tool. Many installers kind of think the Cool Glide as being a microwave and, and actually it's not. It actually uses what we call RF technology or radio frequency wave. And what happens is that actually reacts with a silver coating that's underneath that adhesive and that's actually what heats up, melts the adhesive and then bonds your seam together. The tool, of course, has multiple heat settings. The main button in the front, of course, is a big green button. That's what we call our activation button. So when you've got the tool in place and you're ready to melt the tape, of course, that's the button you're going to push. Notice when I push that button now, in the center of that green button is a light. And notice that light is simply blinking. That blinking is simply telling me that there's no tape underneath the tool. The tool will actually sense the tape prior to it ever activating. Behind that, of course, you have your T button. We call that transverse mode. I like to just call it turn mode because it's simply at the beginning or the end and especially in your doorways. And I'm going to show you that here in just a little bit. That T mode comes in very handy. Beyond that, you have an L, an M, and an H. Simply low, medium, and high. Where those heat settings apply are basically the temperature of the room in which you're installing in and just exactly what that tape is sitting on. You know, many installers today are still seaming directly on top of the cushion. Regardless recommendations from many manufacturers and CFI, Certified Floor Covering Installers Association, that you should be seaming on a hard surface. If you are one of the installers still seaming on top of the cushion, the good thing about the cushion is it's a good thermal insulator. So it does hold the heat into the tape very well. So if there you're seaming in that nice warm room, you're seaming directly on top of the cushion, then that low setting on the Cool Glide should give you all the heat you need to get a good melt on that tape. I always recommend doing a little test shot and just check and see, make sure your melt is good. But in that room, that low setting should be fine. If you are an installer that is now using a seaming board, and I've seen a variety of different types. I've seen everything from a luau, laminate, plywood, you know, quarter inch wood, different sizes, strings, you name it. I will tell you that there's a very unique product by Trax where they took a Teflon product. And nice thing about the Teflon is several things. One, it holds the heat in really well, so it does a really nice job of aiding and softening and giving you extra melt on your adhesive. It's got a nice stainless steel guide in the front, so it makes it very nice for advancing the tool along. But the real beauty about it is it's so nice and easy to get out at the end of your seam. The thing about using a seam board with a cool glide is, be it the Teflon board, a wood, anything you're using, those hard surfaces are going to draw a little bit of heat out of your tape. So you'll need to compensate for that. So in that same warm room on the cushion you were on low, that same warm room now with a seam board, you'll want to bump that up to medium. Compensate for that loss of heat that board's going to draw out of it. As far as the H setting, I usually reserve the H setting for most of my hard surface applications. Uh, the tool in the last few years have gained a just a huge amount of hard surface applications, uh, be it hardwood, laminate, even LVT. We're even doing some vinyl stuff with it now. But there is situations where you might get into a new construction, cold, cold room, probably a room you shouldn't be installing carpet in anyway, but let's face it, we got to get the job done. It, but in that case, bringing the cold carpet into the cold room, you might want to bump that baby all the way up to high. And again, the purpose, just to make sure you're getting a good melt in that adhesive on your tape. Let's go ahead and put this one together. What I've done here is I've already got the tape under. I actually already sealed it with thermal plastic. The reason why I did that is I want to do a whole section just on seam sealing. There is one on this DVD. So take a look at it. It really versus the pros and cons of your, your liquid products versus your thermal plastic products, uh, meaning your glue gun. Uh, what I used here was a Trax gun with the fusion tip. It works great at applying it to the edge. Let's go ahead and put these together and we'll get our seam started. Now I like to think of the process in using the Cool Glide as three very simple steps. All right, first let's get the tool in place. Probably the most key component with using the Cool Glide is making sure that you're keeping the tool and the tape 
nice and centered over one another. You don't want to be the one, you don't want to drift that seaming tool off of your tape. You'll start, you know, getting some edges that might scorch on you. Once you're good and centered on the tape, obviously always double check your heat setting. Since I'm on this wood table, even though I'm in a warm room, I want to be on my medium setting. Let me turn this a little bit too so that you can get a good view of the tool and their settings. So once you're ready to start, again, the big green activation button. Notice now when I push that button, that light stays on. That light staying on is basically just simply telling me that the tool went down and it found the tape. It'll come to see just exactly what heat setting I want that tape heated to. And of course, once it does that, then the light goes off. And I talk too much and notice the light's already off. At that point, it's three steps. Mark, move, and activate. Some guys like to set something down. Most of the time, I just use my finger. But the goal is to mark the front arrow on the side of the tool. Advance the tool until you are now even with the arrow on the rear side of the tool. Always double check that you're good and centered on your seam and activate the next section. At that point, take your seam roller, go ahead and put your seam together. You still use a seam weight with this product, unless of course you're fortunate enough to get a seamer down now. Once again, mark, move, double check you're centered, activate the next section. Notice the nice thing about this too is I don't have any type of smoke, smell, nothing coming in my face, interfering with you know, that homeowner's interior. Once again, my light's off, mark, move, and activate that last shot. Now, you know, I would mentioned that I would talk to you about that T mode or that transverse mode. Let's go ahead and cover that right now. What the T mode does is it basically is a situation when I have turned the tool. For instance, let's say that this were a doorway. It's about the right size, actually. Well, when you're working in a doorway, it's kind of a, it's, it's hard to get melt around that door frame anyway, because you've got the centerpiece, sometimes a door, maybe you couldn't get it off, but it's kind of hard, even with a conventional seaming iron, to get a good melt there. What I will usually do is, what the T-Mode does is the T-Mode, and once you activate the T-Mode, it's strictly T-Mode. There's, there's no TL or TM. Uh, that T button, when you turn it on and you light that T button up, it overrides everything and it's just a T shot. And what it is, it's only enough energy to melt half the amount of tape. So what happens is you've now, if you T, that's why I'd like to call it turn mode. If you turn that tool on that tape, it's enough energy to melt what tape is underneath it. All right. So if you want a good melt on this tape, I just put this on top to kind of give you a better illustration of what I'm doing underneath is if this were my door frame, I would take and I would put the tool on the seam and you want to make sure that the center arrow is now actually centered. I'm just kind of giving you here an illustration. This is what it would look like with my tape underneath. Make sure that center arrow is centered on the center of that tape. So what you would do is you would go ahead and you'd center the tool on the tape. You would activate it in T mode. Once your light goes off there, then go ahead and straighten it up on the seam. And yes, I'm going to overlap that section I just shot. Give it a few seconds and let it pull down cool down, excuse me, take the T button off, and then go ahead and shoot your seam across to the other side. Same thing on the other side. Once I get to my door frame over here and I've done the straight shot, then I wanna turn it, center it again, and do an extra T shot. Make sure you push the T button. Believe me, the last thing you wanna do is turn this tool on the end of the tape not hit the T button and activate that tool. Because what you're telling the tool then is, look, I've got this much tape under it. So the tool will send down enough energy to melt that much tape. So if you are turned and you send all that energy down to this much tape, that's usually when you'll end up scorching the edges of the tape. All right. Now, one thing nice too about the cool glide system is the fact that, you know, everything I did, I did from the surface. So what's unique is that I can then also reactivate any part of my seam from the surface. So let's say you get a seam complaint. You know, about 80 plus percent of the time, if I get a seam complaint or I've got to go look at somebody else's seam complaint, be it a loop or a cut, especially in a residential application, a conventionally installed product, 
you know, you go out there and you got some ledging issues, but once you kind of separate the yarn and you look down to really see what's going on, 80 plus percent of the time I find one of two things. I either find a little gap in between the backings where I can actually see seaming tape, or sometimes it might have had a little bit of bow and they work in it on that cushion, and one backing will barely get on top of the other. It's what we call ledging or overlap. To fix a gap or an overlap seam with a conventional seaming iron, there's really only way to, one way to fix it. You're pretty much pulling everything up. You know, you've got to take your conventional seaming iron, melt all of that old tape off because it's got silicone on the paper, and then redo the seam. So by the time you've re-seamed it, re-stretched it, you've really blown two guys for half a day. Let me show you what I would do with the cool glide. Let's say that I had a situation right here in the middle of this seam, or even part of that seam, and I've got a little gap or an overlap. If I've got a gap, I'll usually bring my crab stretcher in, or I have a very unique device from Gunlock now called the Big Squeeze, which is a device that has feet that plant, teeth feet, that plant here comes up and over with a crank, and I can bring it together, I can back it up, and it gives me a lot of nice room to work underneath it. Very unique tool. Once I've got everything in place, I've got me a little fullness, or if I've just got a little bit of an overlap, usually I'll just drop a few stay nails. Make sure that I'm gonna hold my power stretch because I use power stretch everything. Once you activate that area, then go ahead and again, wait for your light to go off. Once your light goes off, set it aside and open that thing up. And you can then basically open it up and rework whatever that issue was that you were looking at, put it right back down into the same semen tape, Give it a roll, give it a few seconds to cool, pull your stain nails, pull your crab stretcher, whatever you used, and go home. Again, it'll take that two men, you know, blowing a half a day into me sending one of my good helpers out and he's maybe 30 minutes on the job. So guys, there's a lot of things you can do with the Cool Glide that we haven't even shown you yet. There's gonna be some other segments on pattern matching and different things that again, things I can do with a Cool Glide that I just simply couldn't do with my conventional seaming iron. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in another one.